All right, this is the second piece of learning how to deal with large amounts of data inside of Excel. We're going to use a feature called Tables. Now, this Tables feature is incredibly useful, and it solves a lot of the issues in Excel when you deal with large amounts of data. Let me walk you through the process. So what I have here is a very simple, small little table of data, but I'm going to use it as a sample to show you some of the major features inside of this. All right, so this is the button called Format as Table. The first thing you need to do is always do your selection. Now there is one really important piece of information about this selection. Normally in Excel you can select stuff by doing this, where I just choose the column. If you do that and format as table, you're going to create a table that goes all the way to the very end of your Excel document. And that is a very, 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 very long way. What will happen is that Excel will seem like it works at first, but then it's going to get slower and slower and slower, and eventually it's going to run out of memory. So the first thing you have to remember with tables is to do an actual selection of the table. Don't do the option where you click along the top here on the side or any in the corner as well. Now the good news is there are some shortcuts that can make this easier. On your computer, you have Control and Shift. Now this is for a PC, you'll use Control Shift. If you're on the Mac, you're going to use Command and Shift instead. So what you do is put the cursor in the top left corner. Then what you're going to do is hold down the Control or Command key as well as the Shift key and go right and down. What's happening here is that the Command key is basically letting you hop. So if you look at my cursor, you see how when I push right, it goes all the way to the right and all the way to the left? Or all the way down and all the way up. Control hops around. Shift, if I just hold Shift, draws a box. So by holding the two of those, you're both jumping and drawing a box through the entire data. Now this is going to work pretty well unless there's an empty cell in there. If there's an empty cell and you do this feature where you go Control or Command down Shift, you'll see how it doesn't go all the way down. So you have to be kind of careful here. Make sure you go all the way down and then all the way to the right to make this work. All right, so I do my selection first. Once my selection is done, I'm going to hit the Format as Table button. You'll see there's a lot of options here. If you hover your cursor over it, it'll show you the name of each particular one. I'm going to choose a medium one to kind of help you see some of the formatting options. The next box you have to make sure you check properly is my table has headers. This is asking you if the first row are titles of the data that's below them. In my case, yes, they are. Like this cell, unit sold, describes the data that's below it. Often Excel will correctly check this, but it tries to actually guess for you. So occasionally it will not be checked. If it's not checked, what will happen is you'll get sort of generic titles, and I'll show you how to fix that in a second here. For now, make sure it's checked, and then click OK. Once it's checked, now we have a bunch of formatting applied to our table. But beyond formatting, there's a couple other really useful things you have here as well. First, though, let me show you what happens if you choose the wrong value for the previous step. On the previous step, if you did not click My Table as Headers and did OK, now, instead of having the name in the column one box, you have just this generic thing. So to fix this, what you do is just grab that first row, copy it, move it up to the top, and paste. And then I can just delete the row. Okay, but one way or the other, you should have a table looking kind of like what I have here. Now, there's a bunch of nice features inside of this. One of the best features is that once you define something as a table, you don't have to really worry about selections anymore. Let's say you want to delete a row. You'll delete a row by just right clicking on any cell and then choosing delete and table row. So I didn't have to select anything, but actually it's better not to select. Once you're inside of a table, rely on the table to know where it starts and where it stops. The same thing applies to columns. I can right click on a column and click Delete Table Columns. And again, I don't have the whole column selected here. It's just a single cell. And now it's gone. I can even delete a couple at the same time. If I select four cells, I can right click, delete, and choose Table Columns. And now those four columns are all now gone. 
So as you see, this is a lot easier than working with the raw data because you don't have to worry about having part of your data sort of orphaned on the side of the screen. All right, there's other features as well. Let's talk about formatting first. Once you're inside of a table, you have a new ribbon option pop up on the right hand side. If you're outside of a table, you see it's gone. Make sure your cursor is inside so you get that ribbon option. Click on the ribbon option and you'll see you have a bunch of options pop up here. The stuff on, this, on the right are similar to the options you chose when you started the table. You can change it to green or to yellow or to blue, all sorts of different colors and options there. You also should know how to use the checkboxes here. You can have things like banded rows on or off, banded columns on or off, the first column formatted differently, and the last column formatted differently. You also can do a totals row. This is particularly useful for giving you quick access to subtotals. You can put your cursor down here, and once you've got your cursor there, you'll see you have a little drop-down box on the right corner. Click on the drop-down, and then select whatever summary you want, for example, sum. Or you could choose something like average, or even count. So rather than having a type of formula, you just click the drop-down, and Excel does all the work for you. We'll also talk later about pivot tables, but pivot tables are a great tool that goes on top of this sort of table formatting, but we'll get to that later. Now, there's also some features when it comes to sorting and filtering. If you look at the first row, you have these buttons. If I click on one of the drop-down buttons, you'll see it gives me some options like sort ascending or descending. And again, notice I don't have to select the entire table to do this. I just click on the drop down and change it. We can sort by more than one column as well. Let's say, for example, that I currently have it sorted by units sold. But maybe I want to put all of the high tech segments together and then all the low tech segments together and then inside of each unit sold. So you might think you could just go unit sold and then sort here. But when you sort by this column, it messes up the sort for the previous column. So how do you sort by two at the same time? We're going to do this through the home ribbon. I go to the home ribbon and on the right hand side I've got this button called sort and filter. And again, make sure your cursor is inside the table for this to work. If your cursor is over here, Excel is not going to be able to do the sort for you. Put your sort inside the table and then click on the drop down and choose custom sort. Custom sort gives us a couple of options. First off, it lets us choose what column we're currently sorted by. So this is the one that's currently listed right here, unit sold. But I want to first sort by primary segment and second by unit sold. I'm going to add the second by clicking the plus button down below and changing primary this blank spot here into unit sold. Now it's going to sort all the primary segments first and then all the unit sold second. I click OK. Now all the highs and all the lows are together. And then inside of all the highs, I can see it goes from 200 to 800. And then all the lows, it goes from 200 to 1500. So I can see now that this is being sorted inside of each of these, these sort of clusters and not all by itself as well. So that's a key thing for quizzes. Make sure you're comfortable with the sort and filter custom sort option. Now let's talk about the filter options. Let's say I just want to see things with high. I'm going to click on the drop down box and the easiest way is just to click or unclick the check boxes that I see here. I can do this with text like I have in names. I can do this with prices, any numbers I want to take out. I can do it with any of my values by just clicking or unclicking things. When you're tired of your filters, you can go ahead and clear them by going back up here and choosing the clear option. Now, if I have a lot of little values like my material costs, it's hard to go through and check a whole bunch of values. It takes too long. What I'll do instead is add a custom filter. I'm going to choose one of these options here, like equals or does not equal, greater than, lesser than, bottom 10, above top 10, above average, below average, whatever I want. I can have anything that's greater than or equal to 10. 
Now I only have things with the material cost greater than 10. I can sort by other places too. Let's say I come over here to the name category. Now Excel is fairly smart and it sees that this column has text inside of it. What that means is that it'll change the kinds of filters it offers. Now I can have things like begins with, ends with, contains, does not contain, just a whole bunch of different options. I'm going to say things that start with the letter C. Now I only get the products that start with the letter C. So filters are a really powerful tool to let you show and hide certain things inside of your Excel. And when you're done, we'll go ahead back here and clear the filters to see all of our data again. Now one next thing that's helpful when you're working with this is dealing with formulas. When you have hundreds and hundreds of rows worth of data, or even thousands, copying formulas down is kind of time consuming. What we'll do instead is we'll use the table feature to copy it down for us. Let's go ahead and do a new column. We're going to call this the company code. We're going to take the first character of the name. Now the first thing you saw as I added this at the end is that I just typed the value into the cell at the top right corner and the table automatically expanded for me. Now I'm going to type in my formula. I'm going to do a simple left function for the name where I get the first letter off of it. Now the first thing you may notice is that it didn't put in A6. Instead it has this, this name in brackets. That's basically saying that if I click on a cell, rather than giving me the reference, it's actually going to use the name of the column instead. Once I hit enter, it gets copied all the way down. And I can change this and have it automatically copy again. If I change this to two, again, automatically copied down. So it makes my life a little bit easier and not having to manually come over here and drag and drop and copy and all that stuff. It also makes my formulas easy to read. If I wanted to calculate revenue, for example, I might do unit sold multiplied by the price. It's a lot easier for people to double check your formulas with something as simple as this, unit sold times price. That's much easier to understand than something like C6 multiplied by E6. It has the same result, but it's just a little bit cleaner. The other thing that's nice is you can change a, a column title later and all the references to it get automatically updated. So these are a couple of the nice features with tables. Go ahead and scroll on down and you can play with the example down below to see if you can figure out how all these features work on a sample of data.